You're listening to Bark and Wag's 15-Minute Vet Talk. Each week, your host, Polly Requa, interviews veterinarians and individuals in the pet industry from across the nation answering pet questions. Bark and Wag podcast is produced weekly for your enjoyment, and show notes can be found at BarkandWag.com under the podcast tab. That's B-A-R-K-N-W-A-G.com. Please remember to subscribe to Bark and Wag 15-Minute Vet Talk. Thank you for listening to Bark and Wag 15-Minute Vet Talk. Bark and Wag is dedicated to protecting our dogs through advocacy, education, and supporting like-minded dog lovers by selling custom pet products, saving lives by selling collars, scrunchies, and swag. Please check out Bark and Wag's website, BarkinWag.com. That's B-A-R-K-N-W-A-G.com to see the awesome merchandise. Bark and Wag collars and leashes, collar covers, and decorative bandanas are perfect for your pooch. For the owner of the house, we have t-shirts, sweatshirts, long sleeve shirts, hats, and even coasters. We are expanding monthly, so be sure to check back. We love pooch ideas for podcasts and merchandise too, so send an email to polly at barkinwag.com with your suggestions. Welcome to Bark and Wag 15-Minute Vet Talk. I'm your host, Polly Requa. Today we're talking to one of our favorite vets, Dr. Laura Brown, owner of Green Tree Animal Hospital in Libertyville, Illinois, as we discuss what happens when you're hiking or out in the woods and your dog is quilled by a porcupine. Welcome, Dr. Brown. Good morning, Polly. So I just wanted to talk to you about, we recently moved, we are hiking a lot, and one of my coworkers mentioned that we should have pliers in our backpacks just in case our dog is quilled with a porcupine. And the girls and I looked at each other like, what? <laughs> <laughs> what am I doing with those pliers? <laughs> yeah. So I just wanted to talk to you about what happens if we are, uh, you know, one far from the car. And two, how do you get a porcupine quill out of a dog's chest? And uh, I would imagine it would be the chest and uh, nose area. Yeah, um, so a couple um the times that I've seen it when I used to practice out in Idaho, it's, it is on their, usually in their face because usually they're like jumping on them, attacking them, whatever, whatever, trying to figure out what that thing is. And little porcupines sort of just roll up and stick their backs up, protect their little belly. So, um, and they're very, very sharp and they're, um, they go right in and stick. So probably if your dog's really calm about it, it, they hurt. So the dog starts to paw at their face or try and scratch or rub their face in the dirt or whatever. And so timing is kind of important. The sooner they get out, the less worries you have about them migrating. Have you heard about them migrating? Yeah, so that's what, uh, that they can just start moving into the chest cavity or back of the mouth. Right, so uh, the couple times that I've seen them I did have to sedate the dog because they're painful and it's hard to get them out and sometimes they can get them like inside their mouth and so if they're inside their mouth it'd be it'd have to be a pretty darn good dog that would understand to let you open their mouth and grab on with the pliers and pull but that's what we do if we sedate them and then we can you know get every single one out with a hemostat or something similar to a plier and you just pull them back out unlike fish hooks if you've ever experienced that fish hooks have a barb on the end and to get them out you have to push them all the way through and then cut off the barb so porcupines or quills are better than that it's just that there's usually so many of them um, and your dog has to be pretty cooperative so the sooner you can get them out the better so if you're out on the trail then definitely give it a try try and get your dog to calm down understanding that they're pretty uncomfortable and it's probably pretty scary what just happened it and then as soon as you can get back to the car and get to an emergency vet because they're open 24 hours a day and they can help you out for sure okay so just you just kind of hold the dog grab them and pull yeah okay and it's not it's not a it's not a hook so we don't have to worry about right it's not technically difficult if you can get them a hold of them and pull them back my i have a um a client who went up to up the upper up i guess the um upper peninsula of michigan and her dog hunting dog 
got exposed to one, but she said it must have been a baby because the quills weren't very big and it, they were pretty easy to get out and didn't have a lot of them. So then she brought them in to me a couple days later to see if I could make sure they were all out. But unfortunately, if they're not all out and they migrate, they're like looking for a needle in a haystack. That would be look, sort of impossible to find them. It might help your vet if you could take a picture okay, to see where they're all at in case trying to look for one but it would be in, like I said looking for a needle in a haystack so it have to almost be able to feel the quill under the skin before I would tempt like a surgery to like cut over and pull it out if I couldn't see it sticking out because it won't show up in an x-ray it won't show up on an x-ray okay. and that's the difficulty scary part about could it migrate through the tissues in their mouth they could swallow one they're pretty darn sticky and pointy and sharp so if they swallowed one into their esophagus and it poked through their esophagus and migrated into their chest cavity then that could cause a foreign body reaction in this cavity that's only supposed to hold your lungs and no no other things in there so could potentially be a life-threatening problem okay which would not show up that second either. That migration process would take days to weeks to, to find before the infection sort of showed up. Okay. So what I guess I'm um, kind of, the difference is, and I'm sure with your practicing in Idaho, uh, you might have some tips, but, you know, up in northern Wisconsin, you can just get in the car and go to the vet. Yeah. You know, within... 30 minutes yeah uh so you know we've been hiking where we're five hours wow uh you know so because seven miles here <laughs> is not like, like it four is four hours in... yeah yeah <laughs> <laughs> so it's a little bit different so what happens if something and i don't know if they're above tree line but i'm you know just let's say we're two hours out Get, yeah, the, get as many out and just yep. keep the dog moving. Um, should we pack Benadryl or, I mean, is there anything else to... I, mean, the, the, I don't think they cause an allergic reaction. The only thing about the Benadryl is it might calm your dog down enough after it takes it because it does make some dogs sleepy. Okay. Uh, it might make them sleepy enough to allow you to do more pulling of the quills. So you would do a, you know, kind of get it done on your own. I think keeping the dog you know from rubbing them pawing at them you know doing the best you can from keeping them from biting at them on their own body like let's say they're on their legs or something and they're trying to get them out on their own okay um would not be a great idea you know okay. so if they would leave them alone i guess the other thing that i envision you might pack with you is one of those elizabethan collars do you know oh, yeah 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 don't shame because that would put their head inside that and prevent them from pulling if you especially if you were by yourself and you didn't have someone to kind of hold the dog and try and keep them calm from messing with those things okay maybe okay. i mean dogs freak out about those too so i don't know that that's a great idea yeah but, i don't know if i want to hike with one of those. well on that too i mean they could yeah but you could leave it in your car i suppose yeah sure and by the time you get back to the car put it on if you had to drive okay so okay. like, the best bet at that situation is try your best to grab them and pull. And I would say the tip on that is be quick. Grab okay. them and pull. Don't okay. try and twist them out or anything. Grab them, pull them out, move on. Keep going as fast as you can. Okay, great. Well, we certainly appreciate uh, your tips on what to do if a dog is quilled by a porcupine. We'll have to have you back, especially with your training in Idaho, to find out if there's other things that we should watch out for uh, as, if, you know, fall, winter, any other animals, plants uh, that we should be aware of. Okay, sounds good. Well, thank you very much. We'll uh, talk to you next week. Okay, thanks, Polly. Thank you for listening to Bark and Wag's 15-Minute Vet Talk. If you like what you just heard, we hope you'll pass along our web address, www.barkandwag.com, to your friends and other pet owners. Have a pressing question for a veterinarian? Ask your question at barkandwag.com under the podcast tab. This has been a KFR production. Join us next time for another edition of Bark and Wag's 15-Minute Vet Talk.